You guys, uh, do you guys believe that there's an afterlife? I mean, in not life, but like my thought process, there's after something like life. At, there is something, but I don't know about life. But yeah, I used to, but I like to consider myself deduct everything by logic kind of guy. And the more I think about it, I think you just kind of poof, like your chemical matters just stop doing the things that they do, and you just yeah. What did you used to believe? Yeah, I mean, I genuinely believed that, you know, the, the circle of life kind of thing. I think you just kind of reincarnate out uh, into oblivion, but that's also kind of how I was raised, Hindu culture background. Um, but now I think I just believe that you kind of just go out, brain matter and all. Okay, what, what kind of took you away from that belief? I don't know. I think... The more I thought about it, it just looked like more wishful thinking. And it just doesn't quite make sense to me as like much as, oh, we just exist because some complex shit happened, interaction between molecules, and then when you die, those molecules just become something else. Um, what, do you, what do you believe was in the very beginning? Do you, do you believe in the Big Bang or in what science teaches nowadays? You know, yeah, I guess like that's the most make sense thing but at the same time like what is the thing that exploded you know to like create all of universe like we say big bang but like there has to be before that right because if we empty ourselves out with all of the knowledge that we've been taught through our entire lives we we if we emptied all of that out and said that you know nothing created everything that would sound absolutely absurd to us yeah. without any of you know anybody telling us anything other than that right you know because what the big bang teaches is that at some point whether it's millions or billions of years whatever they're saying that that matter came to life and then dna was created and dna is it's the biological code that makes up every living thing in the entire world us uh, how tall we're going to be how our eye color our hair color our you know every single detail about our body and if something changes that's the dna is the code that changes yeah. what what changes that you know in, in plants and animals and in rabbits and horses and every you know every living thing in the world is created by a code called dna we would never look at literally anything else in the entire world and say you know we would look at a building we know even if the builder has died hundreds of years ago we know that there was a builder a painting has a painter everything that exists you know we can tell when it has some kind of design to it that it had a creator behind right except life the most complicated thing in the world, we will say that, you know, that just was matter coming to life through some accident. And then everything we see today, this perfect universe is, is was just an accident. It's hard to, you know, for us to believe that if we just, but that's what society teaches us nowadays, right? And that's the most logical thing that they can come up with is that um, matter came to life and then DNA created itself. Where do you, what do you think is after we are put in the ground? I think we, I mean, for me, what I think is we're just energy right now. So we just transform into like a different form. So like right now we're life and the feeling of me being myself, I have this inside me. I think that's going to change. That's not going to remain. And then we just transform into something else, a uh, different type of energy. Or buried or burned, like it just basically what happens to your body after you're dead. So I think that determines like what kind of energy you become. And where, um, where did this belief come from? I think it's just like basic science, right? So like you light a fire and then it becomes heat, it becomes hot, like the same thing. So it's just a different type of energy. Like I'm not talking about like some supernatural stuff. I'm just talking about like basic science. Does, uh, does, it, does it matter if, if we're morally good here on Earth while we're not at all? Yeah, probably not. I mean, like... You want to live your best life, but at the same time, yeah, like ultimately for your whatever afterlife, I don't think it really matters. Okay. And to be honest, like I, I have some beliefs because I was like uh, cultured into that, right? Versus like right now, like if you ask me, like what does your religion or what, like whatever, whatever your culture, what, what do you believe in it? Then I don't really have any specifics like, okay, this is like hardcore thing that I believe in versus this is not. I don't like particularly care about those like it's just um, we just go by the day like today is I'm feeling good I don't have to follow particular like I don't have to do this and that for Hinduism or anything like that it's just uh, it's just a part of my identity uh, how I grew up but like um, at this point like 
it's just living my life. So do you believe that there was there was a creator to all of this perfection, or do you think that it was a uh, uh, evolutionary process? Um, I th think it's an evolutionary process, but I mean, if there um, was, let's say, let's say, let's say, if there was a creator, right? I wouldn't call it like uh, I know some people do, like a supreme power or whatever. I wouldn't say it that way, but like if there was a creator, it could be like something like you know what i mean um not an alien i'm just i'm just talking about like it could be anything it could be like a big bang it could be like it could be just like forces colliding or something like that so it's just like i, I just don't believe in this having a supreme power that created everything created life no i don't have that belief so you pretty much you know the basis of it is we're we're kind of here without any purpose and you know, we're just kind of randomly going through life until it's over and then kind of maybe hopefully turn into something else after it's over and not like I don't know a, a beetle <laughs> or, or something like yeah. right <laughs> all right um okay well I'm out here and I, I tell people um it was I was thinking logically if there was a creator that created everything and, and everything moves at with perfect precision even the universe is just we can we can look a thousand years into the future and see exactly where all the stars and all the planets everything's going to be because it's so perfect the the environment that we live in where, where the sun is 90,000 miles away but it's just warm enough here to ripen our tomatoes and you know our crops and um everything is just perfectly uh, designed for us to to be able to breathe air and have this atmosphere and so i believe that there was a creator i believe that a, a perfect design uh requires a perfect creator that that designed it this way but the bible teaches is that in in creation he's revealed um, we are without excuse well this is just a side question i guess but like yeah he made the sun a perfect distance away from us so our tomatoes could ripen so you believe like he's done that for however x many other like human you know aliens basically because they're not from earth you think he's done that elsewhere in the universe for a whole lot of other or like we're the chosen ones earth and here and this is it um, well you know as far as the alien has been a big subject lately right it's yeah. you know it's becoming a bigger thing you know, we believe that there's life outside of here right it, it, but it's um they believe that they're uh fallen angels you know, and we believe that there is something outside of here right and it's it's kind of hard not to with all of this stuff that's going on today chosen children um well the book of romans says that uh we are not all children of god um, um when jesus walked the earth he told the pharisees that your father is the father of lies he's telling them that you're of the devil right and um in, in romans it tells us that we are adopted children of god when we come to christ but um is is there morally do you guys believe that you're good people yeah. for the most part yeah I like to live my life that way. What, what standard do we what do we use when we say that we are good people? I mean, as long as I live my life, I do no harm and good to nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like treat others how you want to be treated, kind of thing. Like, if it would feel bad to me, I probably don't like doing that to other people. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but like you know, I try my best not to. Right. So that's yeah, that's it. That's the code. If we don't have a, a moral standard a moral a absolute ultimate moral code we kind of society either has to make it up you know with laws or we have to kind of make it up and decide it for ourselves but, you know different religions different cultures and stuff like that they you know some people find it okay to you know do the things that we believe are wrong in their culture right and, and vice versa but um the bible teaches that we have uh, an ultimate moral law that's what he laid down the foundation so we can understand what is what's good and what's evil what's right and what's wrong right and if if we were basing it off of that um can i ask you guys a couple questions to find out if you know how we will line up with with his law how many lies have you told in your life don't know countless right so what, what do we call somebody that tells lies liar Right? Have you guys ever in your life taken anything in, in, that did not belong to you, regardless of value? Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me. Jesus came and he said that if if we look upon a woman with lust, we've committed adultery with her in our heart. Have you guys ever looked upon a woman with lust? Sure. Who's sure. we've used taken his name and and used it as a cuss word, but we say Jesus Christ and we say you know OMG um, because he tells us that the world hates me. 
right? Have you guys ever used his name in vain? Yeah. Countless. He also says that when we hate somebody, if we've ever hated somebody, we've committed murder in our heart. This is how high his ultimate standard is because he's a perfect, just God. And, and he knows that, you know, we look at people with lust that if we were given the opportunity, we would we would do whatever we were going to do. Right. Um, laws keep that in place and keep us in check. And but if if we took away all the laws and all the punishments in the world, you, we would see how evil people are. Right. But by our own admission, and I'm not judging you guys, and I thank you for being honest. And um, by our own admission, we're we're lying thieving, blasphemous, adulterers at heart, and then we call ourselves good, which is, you know, telling us that we're self-righteous by saying we're good when we know we're not. We're, we're guilty sinners like the rest of the world. That's, um, if we were basing it off of God's ultimate moral law, are we innocent or guilty at the end of the day? Um, I think, yeah, guilty as hell. Same? But like, yeah. That's just a hard to keep up with code, man. Right. And, and that's what the Bible says, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He says that there is no righteous person, no, not one, right? Um, so we're guilty by his law. If we're basing it off of his law, is it heaven or hell? Here? Here or like, are we talking about afterlife or here? Afterlife? If that's the standard we're going for, probably we're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all going to hell by that standard. It's... Everybody, right. he says that all of our good deeds are of filthy rags. He says they mean nothing. You know, it's like us going into a courtroom and um, committing a, a horrendous crime and, and saying that, you know, I've, I've, I know I've done these things, but I've also done a lot of good things in my life. You know, and that was in the past. I don't do that anymore. But the judge is going to throw that out and say, I, I don't care. I'm judging basing this off of the crime that you committed. And it's the same thing. He's a perfect, just God. So somebody has to pay the price. But according to the Bible, what, what did God do for us that we don't have to go to hell? He died for our sins or something like that? Oh, right. That yeah. Right. right. And almost all of America knows that. Jesus came and he died on the cross for the sin of the world. But what people don't really get a grasp of is that when he was on the cross, he was saying that it is finished right before he died. What he's saying is that the debt has been paid. And now it's like us going in a courtroom with um, a bunch of speeding tickets that we can't pay for. Right. And we're guilty. And, and we, we deserve, you know, judgment that's coming towards us. But somebody else walked in the courtroom and decided, I want to pay all of his fines for him. That's what Jesus was doing on the cross. He, we had a debt that we couldn't pay. And what he did was took the ten, sin of the world. And all he tells us is to trust in me and repent of your sins. He's telling us to trust in him like we trust in a parachute. If we're about to jump out of an airplane and there's a parachute on the ground and, and you know, we don't just believe that the parachute is there. We have, to, we have to pick it up and put it on. Our motivation is the fear, right? If we're looking out on an airplane, and we're, our fear is telling us, put the parachute on. But we, have, we put our 100% of our trust in the parachute. We don't just believe it's there. And Jesus is telling us to put me on. There's nothing that you guys can do the breaking the, the law that God put in place. So here's the summation is, is that he, he gave us the law. We broke the law. And Jesus Christ paid the fine. That's what the Bible teaches. Is Jesus Christ, wait, yeah, yeah like you know the holy trinity or whatever they're all the same person right uh it's three persons and one being is what the sorry yeah they're all one being so the being made the law and then the being sacrificed himself for the law that he made that nobody else could upkeep god created all things that's what the bible teaches right he created all things um that that ever was um he lives outside of time space energy matter and he's created all of those things all of us he did not create um, sin. He gave us the free will to choose because if it's like it, the law that says this is how sin is defined. Like sin is after you get judged for it. A sin doesn't become a sin before it's judged. Like there, a sin is only an action is only ever a sin if there's something to compare it to. The origin of sin has to have some rules. Otherwise, there is no sin. You know what I'm saying? He technically created sin. He laid out the rules that said for what sin constitutes, so he created sin. There would be no sin. There would just be people doing things. What happened in the beginning was, you know, is is God's word, right? He's We believe that he's a perfect, just, absolutely perfect God, right? And the very first command that he gave Adam was, you know, do not eat off of this tree. 
if we know that God is perfect, if we know that he's good and just and absolutely nothing but love and, and kindness, and right, if he tells us something, we know that he can't lie. We know that he's perfect. We know that his justice is, is right and everything that we are is not that. You know, Proverbs tells us, do not lean on your own understanding. So everything that he tells us, we have to take in with he, right, he knows, and, and maybe I, you know, don't understand it. So if he's given us a command and we break that command, we then know that this is not of God, right? And that's what happened in the very beginning. He told them something. They, and then the devil, the first thing he did was try to attack God's word by saying, did God really tell you that you shall surely die if you eat this fruit? And he deceived Eve into eating. And then Eve gave it to Adam. And that's where it all began. And, and God explains how all creation is a curse now because of this sin. And that's what why we are um, born into it. We receive it. And that, that, that uh, root of sin is in all of us. Nobody needs to teach us how to lie or steal or anything like that. We, we can be anywhere. And we know that moral code is written in our hearts. So we know that these things, you can be born on an island with 10 people. And we know that stealing from them is wrong lying from them is wrong killing people is is absolutely wrong you know we know all of those things without anybody having to tell us is it something that you guys you know will think about later i've i've thought about it before i've gone through i used to attend some like bible uh there's a guy in our neighborhood when we first moved and he ran a mission church thing and so i used to go there and we did like a whole nine months of it I listened to it, and it all kind of sounds the same as every other religion I've read. They all just preach, like, be a good person, you know? And so that's ultimately what I took out of it. If there, there is one difference between um, following Christ and every, literally every single other religion in the entire world, that they will teach you that it is by our good works. We have to be good enough people. I mean, we're talking, you know, Muslims, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, all of them say that we have to be good people. But the Bible teaches that we, we are not good people. There's nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. It's by nothing that we do so that no man can boast. That's what the Bible teaches us. Grace is given by through faith alone. And that's, that's where our salvation comes from. Every other religion in the world says we have to be good enough people. And then at the end, Judgment Day, we have to hope that we did enough, that God will accept us. But Christianity is different in saying that it's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we can do that can earn our, our salvation. We give Jesus Christ our life, and the, the Bible says you lay your, your life down at the foot of the cross, and God promises to give you a new heart with new desires, and that's what happened to me two years ago. I was out just one of the worst people ever, man. I, I, was, I was just ga constant gambling, constant drinking, doing all kinds of things, living the way I wanted to live, and man, my dad died a couple of years ago, and I hit just absolute rock bottom to where I said, if, 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 if if you're there, it's time to show up. I need, I need you, and I need something to to show me what's going on in my life. And, and my whole family has realized that I'm I'm not the same person as I used to be anymore. And this is what I'm doing. As uncomfortable as it is out here, I love you guys enough to come up here and tell you that the gospel. Everybody needs to hear it. Everybody deserves to hear it because come right, judgment day, if he's going to ask me why am why why did you you believe that there's a heaven and a hell and you weren't telling anybody else, that's very selfish. Right. There, there's nothing that that should be stopping me. Even my fear. It's really scary actually coming up to random people and talking to them, especially about this subject, because it's a touchy subject for a lot. Some people, you know what I mean? And um, but it's, it's exactly what had happened to me two years ago. And there was no other way of me explaining how it happened. But I was born again and um, the old me has died. And, and it was like I despised what I was doing before. And so I come out here and I share the gospel with people and I let them know that, you know, God is a patient God and that there is a creator and he reveals himself through this creation. We, we have deceived ourselves by, by thinking that the, all of this perfection, this blue sky and these clouds and these, this water and the, every animal, that creature that walks this earth happened through an accident. And we're just here um, thinking that it's all purposeless. Because that is what it is without without a God, without a creator, that we just we're just here wasting time. We're just here kind of waiting to die and, you know, maybe enjoy a few things along the way that uh, we think is going to bring us joy. But I'm, I'm a perfect example of how it's not right. I chased money and I chased everything that I thought was going to bring me happiness. And it found me in my truck not wanting to be here anymore. Right. 
and um, and I had everything that I wanted. I had a house. I had I had plenty of money. I, you know, I would would sleep around. I'd do whatever I wanted, and it and none of it brought me happiness. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I was in my truck at night, screaming at God, and and blaming Him, and and asking Him, if you're here, reveal yourself to me. And that's all I ask of people is if we have plenty of time on our hands, right? All I ask of people is, when you're alone. If this random guy that came up to me and started talking to me, if what he's telling me is true, reveal that to me. Right. And just, you know, ask in sincerity because that's that's all he's asking. Come to me and he will reveal these things. He, he promises that once we do these things, he promises fulfillment of joy. So that's why you see sometimes you'll see videos of people on the street, homeless with absolutely nothing. You know, the Apostle Paul was beaten within an inch of his life, thrown in prison almost the entire majority of his life after he came to Christ, and he was singing praises to God. It couldn't take away his happiness. It couldn't take away his joy. And um, that's what the Bible teaches. But um, it was really, yeah, it was really, I appreciate you guys letting me talk to you. And it was been a lot longer than five minutes. I apologize. <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys talking to me, man. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Thank you.